What's up, guys? Uh, so this is a 2003 uh, GSXR 750. It's not my bike. Um, it's my nephew's bike. Uh, he picked this up really cheap um, as a project. So this is a bike that was uh, previously used for, for the track. It had been dumped and had been pretty messed up. Um, so we've been kind of going through for the past, I don't know, six months or so, um, going through and just trying to get everything right again. So all new plastics, um, new supports, you know, new pegs and controls and, you know, just everything that had been bent or scratched, we pretty much replaced. Um, but we've been having some trouble and, and it, we knew this when, when he got it, that it wasn't running right. And the, you know, the previous owner didn't really know what was wrong. He just wanted to offload the bike. Um, so we've replaced things like the stator and the rectifier, make sure we're getting good electrical. Um, we went through and the, the plugs are new. We uh, took apart and cleaned the injectors, um, cleaned the whole fuel system out. The tank had a bunch of rust in it, and that, I think, is what's going to tie into this a little bit more. Tank had a bunch of rust in it, so we you know, took that out and cleaned out all the gunk and tried to clean the, the uh, fuel pump and the fuel pump sock uh, and just hose everything out as best we could. And it got running a lot better, but um, he was still having some, some issues with it stumbling and stuttering under load. So it would start up, it would idle, and he'd drive it. And when he started to really get on the throttle, that's when it would start to buck and stutter and stumble. And like I said, we went through and looked at the plugs again. It seemed like they weren't firing, uh, or at least they weren't firing well. Um, it just, some, just some weird mixed signs here. So finally, we did a, uh, a fuel flow test, and I'm going to insert a picture here. Um, the fuel flow for this bike is supposed to be 1.2 liters or more of fuel in 30 seconds. So you can disconnect the fuel line, you can um, jump the, uh, the fuel pump relay and get it running and run a timer and see if it's, it's putting it out. So you, know, you can see from that picture that we were nowhere near you know, maybe a little more than half of what the fuel flow was supposed to be. So I started doing some research and uh, a lot of people point to the high pressure pump, uh, sorry, the high pressure filter. So there's a high pressure filter, which is a big plastic housing. And then there's uh, like a sock uh, at the bottom of the pump. And if you've taken these things apart, if you watch a million other videos on how to take these apart, um, you'll, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But, um, we started looking at that high pressure filter and it's like a $400 filter. And I just couldn't believe, you know, 400 bucks for a filter. And I mean, we're not even hundred percent sure that's the problem. So, um, I got online, I started seeing like, okay, are there, you know, aftermarket filters and you know, for this model year, we just couldn't find anything. Now I'm not saying they don't exist, but I just wasn't having a lot of luck. I could find them for different years and I could find them for different models, but not one that looked exactly like what we needed for this. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really know what to do. I, like I said, 400 bucks on a filter. I mean, for the price you spend on this bike, that's, that's a, a big chunk of money. Um, well then I stumbled across a forum for the, uh, the Suzuki V-Strom owners. And uh, apparently they have a very similar filter and they have a very similar type of problem. When rust happens in these tanks or really any sort of contamination and those filters get uh, clogged up or they just get, you know, just in time, they just build up a lot of sediment. They're not easy to clean. They're not uh, uh, serviceable. So these guys are running into the same problem. And, and what somebody said was, you can drill a hole in the plastic housing to bypass the high pressure filter. And then you can essentially run an external uh, filter instead of the, the internal one. Um, so that sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole and, uh, and yeah, that's what we ended up doing. So here's what the whole pump assembly looks like when you remove it from the tank. Um, the black is the actual filter. The, uh, screen sits down in that little sump and then the, uh, pump itself is the silver cylinder that you see there. Um, so basically what I'm pointing at right now is where the filter media is. It's like a hump on the black. Um, there's the, uh, pressure regulator up there at the top. And this is what the whole thing looks like before you start taking it apart. Um, so we need to uh, basically increase the fuel flow that's coming out uh, so that we're getting the volume that we need. 
So here's the uh, fuel filter removed. Um, this hole right here is the outlet. Uh, the triangular hole at the top of that is going to be the original hole, and then this um, round hole is the hole that's being drilled. So when you put in the drill and actually drill the hole, it needs to come down at an angle into the, that kind of hump, the chamber where the filter actually is. Um, and so that way, uh, you know, it's bypassing that filter at this point. It's going to go into that chamber and rather than being routed through the filter, it's just going to go right past it, out through the hole that we drilled, and come out of the tank or out of the pump assembly. Um, so that essentially removes any restrictions that you might be experiencing due to a partially clogged or restricted uh, filter. And you can kind of see the filter element there. It's that white down in that hole. So this is essentially what we've done, and I need to clean this up by shortening the lines, but we've added some 5 16 high-pressure fuel hose, and then some high-pressure fuel clamps, and an external fuel filter that's rated for um, fuel pressure uh, for, for fuel injection, which is 43 PSI on this particular bike. And like I said, we could shorten up those lines quite a bit, but this way we're still getting a filter um, after bypassing the factory one uh, that, in that plastic housing. It's not perfect yet. I think the lines can be shortened up quite a bit, um, but it, it's, you know, it fits for now. And I'm happy to say that the hesitation seems to be gone. Um, you know, he, he ran it up and down through the gears, you know, heavy loads, and we, he's not experiencing that hesitation anymore. Um, so I think, you know, even though this may not be a, a great long-term fix, you know, eventually you may want to spend the money for that $400 filter. If you're in a pinch, um, or if you just want to have an easily serviceable, easily uh, swapped out um, filter, this is a great option. And this is going to apply to, from what I, from what I found, around the same generation, early 2000s, uh, GSXRs, 600s, 750s, and, and Hayabusa's, the 1300s, uh, the SV650 and SV1000, I think. Uh, and then the V-Stroms of different engine sizes. So there's a lot of different early 2000s Suzuki bikes that have this similar type of high-pressure filter. And while there may be aftermarket options available for some of them, um, clearly there's not for all of them. And, and um, you know, even those may have some problems. So anyway, um, I hope this helps you guys out. If you've got a Suzuki, uh, it seems to be working great so far. Um, so yeah. I mean, it's just something, little shade tree mechanic type of solution to the problem that I learned after some internet research, and I'm just happy to kind of pass that knowledge along again.